For more on this, we are being joined by retired Colonel Rich Outson from Washington, D.C. He is a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and the Jamestown Foundation. Rich, great to see you again, and thank you for joining us on WEON. How will the war between Israel and Hamas impact Israel's relationship with the U.S., considering increasing scrutiny of Israel's actions and the potential change in tone from the United States towards Israel? Uh, well, it's good to be with you, Susan. Th this is the most tension I've seen in this bilateral relationship uh, as long as I've been watching uh, Middle East politics, and that's that's several decades now. I, I think you have mm -hmm. a, a broad bipartisan support for Israel's security that's still solid. Uh, there's also the emergence of something we haven't seen before, though, which is a very critical anti-Zionist uh, and to some extent anti-Israel progressive wing in the Democratic Party. And as the party has moved further to the left, uh, under President Biden and, and a little bit away from that sort of bipartisan consensus in the center, you're hearing sharper and sharper criticism. There's been strains uh, in Israel that derive from this, such as when Benny Gantz, an opposition leader, but also a member of the security cabinet came to visit, and that was not approved uh, by uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. So uh, there are a lot of strains showing, and I think there's still support in Washington for Israel to do what it can to make sure Hamas does no longer constitute a threat after the war, but it becomes murkier and murkier as this intelligence report indicates about how that's gonna play out and how long the suffering of the civilian population in Gaza has to be balanced against that. Rich, what are the implications of Israel's planned offensive on Rafah? President Biden has described it as a quote unquote red line. I mean, that's uh, an issue of its own. We remember former President Barack Obama, he put a red line for Assad in Syria. He didn't uh, really come through with that. And a lot of talk has been made of really putting a red line on others if the United States is not willing to do something serious. Uh, was it wise for the president to use that term? I, I don't think so. Uh, the history of the Biden administration and before him, the Obama administration in which he was vice president on issuing uh, red lines and then not observing them is established. Uh, the other thing is that there's just, look, when you talk about a red line, mm -hmm. there has to be a consideration of how you enforce red lines. And in most cases, in most countries, that means economic sanctions or military coercive power, diplomatic sanctions, that sort of thing, none of which the Biden administration is in a position to use against Israel. So it's a bit of a flight of rhetoric trying to underline the fact that he thinks it's a really bad idea. Now, you asked about implications. Rafah is different than the rest of the Gaza Strip in that it's the main connection to Egypt. So there have been for decades now, bigger, deeper smuggling tunnels under Rafah than you would find, for instance, in the northern or the central parts of the Gaza Strip. There's tunnels there used by Hamas fighters uh, to get back and forth in the Strip and also to, to reach out and try to attack into Israel. But the tunnel network and structure in Rafah is much deeper and much more uh, developed. So there'll be a, a lot more fighting. And the other thing is you've got half the Strip's population packed down in there. The Israeli government has said, well, we need to move these mm -hmm. people to the west or to the central part of the Gaza Strip prior. But again, this is already a population that's sort of on the brink uh, of uh, real hunger and, and perhaps even famine by some accounts. So the time that it would take for those military operations is going to put even further strain. I don't know that there's anything uh, President Biden can do given the restraints on what Congress will allow and the United States public in terms of real pressure on Israel. And so the, the question is, does Netanyahu mm -hmm. listen to him at all or just continue on the path he's already laid out? Yeah, so true. Uh, Colonel, thank you so much for joining us on We On. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Rich, I look forward to speaking to you again very soon as we follow this story very closely. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.